The day is finally here, the moment we've all been waiting for, Kitty Pride and Colossus get engaged. Oh, you want me to talk about Action Comics? What's up everybody, I'm Stan and welcome to Detail Comics where we go over comics in detail. This is Preview Picks, the show where I go over the comic books coming out on Wednesday, give you an idea what they're all about, and whether there's something you should talk to your comic book shop about. Make sure you subscribe to get more of this every single Monday. The first book that I want to talk about is Justice League number 43, which is the finale of the Christopher Priest run on this, before we kick off the No Justice storyline, which starts up in May. So while it hasn't necessarily been the favorite of a lot of different people, I think that is a really refreshing take compared to Brian Hitch's early run, and one that should really be paid attention to. Of course, no Justice does have me pretty amped up for what Scott Snyder and Francis Manipole can do, as well as Joshua Williamson and James Tynan and everybody else that's working on it, so I'm a little bit torn. I think that this is going to be a pretty good standalone series, but it's one of those things where if you're really anticipating what's coming up in No Justice, you might pass this one by. Also over at Image, we have Kick-Ass number 3, which continues a classic telling of a story with brand new characters from John Romita Jr. and Mark Millar. I am going to let you know that this is a book that I'm probably not going to be picking up much further, simply because John Romita Jr isn't necessarily my favorite when it comes to his art style. I just I just can't get past it. So uh, if it's something that you guys are interested in, make sure that you pick it up. We also have Amazing Spider-Man Renew Your Vows number 18, which is continuing on this kind of conflict at Midtown High with uh, Annie Parker and uh, Peter's a substitute teacher, and there's all kinds of different really crazy stuff going on. She's trying to figure out how to be a superhero or lead a superhero group of friends that aren't necessarily sure what they're getting into. So she takes on a kind of leadership role, even though she doesn't really have that much experience herself. It's an interesting concept, and I can't wait to see how Jody Hauser fleshes it out. Also, a brand new one on my list is Mighty Morphin Power Rangers from Boom Studios, and this is going to be continuing the Shattered Grid story crossover. So this is issue number 26, and it's crossing over with the other Power Rangers book. I haven't picked up any of the other issues. I don't necessarily know if I should. It's not something that I'm really super into, but if you guys tell me in the comments down below that this is pretty badass, I'll go grab it so that that way I can see exactly what's going on. A book where I know exactly what's going on is Aquaman number 35, which is beginning the Kingslayer arc. So we learned about King Wrath's origin, and now we, he knows that Aquaman is alive and he's going to send everybody out after him so that that way there's no challengers to the throne. So while Mera's storyline's going on, we're going to get this one over in Aquaman, and I'm just really excited because I haven't been really up on Aquaman. I haven't been excited about Aquaman in quite some time, and this is one of those rare exceptions. So where that storyline is just beginning, this one's going to be ending over in Tales of Suspense number 104, which is part five of the five-part mini-series written by Matthew Rosenberg, dealing with Bucky Barnes and Clint Barton, hunting down Natasha Romanov and trying to find out whether she's still alive or not. And since we've seen her inside Infinity Countdown taking possession of the Time Stone from Wolverine, we already know the answer to this story, but it's going to be interesting to see where the kind of conclusion's written out, and overall the characterizations between Clint and Bucky, those are the things that have really been saving the title. So if you've been reading Tales of Suspense, this is going to be the final issue for you. Let's take a moment and hop back into Independence and let's talk about Descender number 29 and I am a huge proponent of Descender. Descender is one of my favorite independent books since it came out. Dustin Yuin and Jeff Lemire's space drama that's dealing with this entire rise of the robots and there's just so much going on. The cold, calculated death of space mixed with this kind of light, fresh watercolor atmosphere. It's such a contrast and contradiction that I can't help but enjoy it. And then the writing from Jeff Lemire is always top notch. So if you want to cry about the emotional struggles of robots, this is a book for you, and I keep recommending it more and more and more and more and more. It's just that good. Next, let's talk about DC's New Age of Heroes, and we do not get a brand new book this week like we did last week with the Immortal Men, but we do get Damage Number 4, which is going to be taking on Poison Ivy, it looks like. This is going to be the first issue without Tony Daniel on the art, and we're going to get Carrie Nord for this one, so it's a transition that you're going to have to watch to see if it's a book that you're going to continue to pick up. Usually, artistic transitions can make for really interesting reactions from different people, different readers. If an artist connects with you to the beginning, and then they switch to a different one and it doesn't, it could really impact how you enjoy the story. So keep that in mind when you pick up your Damage image number four. And then what Marvel's calling the wedding of the century, I guess, uh, is X-Men Gold number 26, where we're dealing with Kitty Pride and Colossus. And it's... Uh, I don't care. <laughs> I, just, I just don't care. I haven't been talking about X-Men Gold in quite some time. I'm much more excited about all new Wolverine, X-Men Red, uh, and then the propositions of brand new X-Men titles that are going to be coming out. There's just so much to look forward to when it comes to Marvel's X-Men versus what's continually going on right now inside X-Men. X-Men Blue is actually pretty interesting with this whole brand new team with Polaris and all those guys, but it's just 
gold hasn't really got me the way that it should. Uh, hopefully, we're going to see some developments inside X-Men in the future, but we'll keep you updated if we get more news on that. A book that I have always been a fan of, though, is Super Sons, and Super Sons issue number 15 comes out, and this is the beginning of the last two story pieces. So this is part one of a part two story, which is going to finish out the run on Super Sons, where Peter J. Tomase and then the, whole, the artists that have been working with him on this book are really going to take the Super Sons into the future. We don't necessarily know what the future is for these Super Sons, but we do know that the Teen Titans are going to get it revamped, and there's a bunch of different characters that aren't necessarily... You know, they're not John Kent. John Kent is not on the Teen Titans. That is not part of the official lineup. So, disappointing? Yes. But the Super Sons are hopefully going to be continuing in some other iteration in the future. It's just too good a book not to have on the shelves. And it's such a good idea that you, you really need to be developing this. If DC's not doing anything with the Super Sons and they don't have any plans for it, which I doubt is the case, they're just losing out on possibilities. Of course, we can talk about ideas that may or may not have been good ones, and Weapon H number two comes to mind. The combination of Hulk and Wolverine just sounds like a phenomenal amalgamation of two great characters and two great power sets and possibilities, but the story itself and how it's been introduced isn't necessarily quite up to snuff as far as I'm concerned. I mean, I'm open to its potential. I think that if you can create a compelling storyline for the Weapon H program, I am going to be on board, so I'm going to have to check this one out for the first arc at least before I can really pass judgment on it. However, I do see some pitfalls that might be coming in this book, and hopefully they can be rectified in issue number two. But I'm going to let you know that it's coming out, because if it's something that you want to grab, I want you guys to know about it. Bouncing back over to DC, let's talk about the Brave and the Bold Wonder Woman Batman number three, which is continuing on this whole Celtic mystery story arc, which is going to drag Batman into the world of Celtic gods with Wonder Woman, and they're going to try and solve this problem. There's just a lot going on, and Liam Sharp is writing and doing the art for this, so he's got a really tight grasp on where the story is going, but the story is very distinct. It's very different from what I'd really expect out of this kind of book, but you've got to really dive in with both feet and embrace the fact that he knows what he's doing if you want to get the most out of this book. One thing you can't deny is that the art is really good. Check out The Brave and the Bold number three if you haven't had the chance already. Also, in the aftermath of Daredevil number 600, we get 601, and now Matt Murdock is the mayor of New York City as Wilson Fisk lies in a hospital in really poor medical condition. But where's Matt Murdock? Matt Murdock's in his Daredevil costume, locked up in the back of a police cruiser. Not necessarily cruiser, but he's in the back of like a paddy wagon and stuff like that. So what is he going to be doing? How is he going to escape from this situation? How is Daredevil going to become the mayor without becoming an outlaw at the exact same time? So it's an interesting proposition. I think that, you know, I'm, I'm on board with Charles Sewell and where he's going. I see a ton of potential for the Mayor Fisk arc, and I'm, I'm excited. I still need to see more of an impact for Mayor Fisk inside the greater Marvel Universe in order for it to really kind of carry the weight that it should. That's what I want. I want other people to reference Mayor Wilson Fisk. Now we're headed towards some of the bigger books this week, and Batman number 45 hits my radar hard. What we've got is Tony Daniel coming over from Damage, and he's going to be telling the story of Booster Gold and Batman hunting down Booster Gold, who took Booster Gold from the other part of the universe. So it's a time travel story dealing with time travel and the, the consequences of time travel, and you're going to have Catwoman, Batman, Booster Gold all hunting down his himself in the past. I'm excited to see where this one goes. It looks like it's going to be an interesting storyline. The Travelers is going to be the name of the story arc, so I'm excited to see where this one ends up. Also, we have Avengers number 689, which is part 15 of the No Surrender storyline. We've got this and one more issue that's going to be coming after that. And what we saw last issue, well, you can check out the review, which I've got up in the upper corner there. But if you're talking about Avengers 689, this is going to bring back, it looks like, the Grandmaster. You've got the Hulk floating out in space. Is he going to even play a factor in the final conclusion? The Challenger has a physical prowess beyond what even I expected when it comes to this. And then, finally, Quicksilver made the ultimate sacrifice and brought back the rest of the Avengers from stasis. So. So his time travel storyline thingy is going to be happening on, but the conclusion of No Surrender is looks like it's going to be a big blockbuster finale, which I'm excited about. Of course, speaking of finales, Superman number 45 is the last issue from Peter J. Tomasi and Patrick Gleason on Superman, which has been the best or one of the best DC Rebirth titles since it started. The wholesome nature of Superman inside this characterization has been fantastic, and the art, I mean, it's just, it's just been stellar. I've been so happy with Superman, and to see it end with issue number 45, which is the Boyzaro re-death storyline, which is going to come to its conclusion, I just... 
I'm so sad to see it go. I, I, I'm excited for Brian Michael Bendis, but Brian Michael Bendis for me has been relatively hit or miss, and every single issue, almost every single issue from Peter J. Tomasi and Patrick Gleason has been a showstopper. I, I'm going to probably go back and retell or redo or reread all of these issues and see which ones are the best from me to you. So uh, Superman number 45 is a must-buy, and if you haven't been reading the entire series, go back and grab it. It's just fantastic. Then we head over to an event book and we've got Infinity Countdown number two. So Infinity Countdown number two is going to probably tell the story of Groot. Based on the cover, we're going to deal with some Power Stone issues, we're going to deal with Groot, we're going to deal with the Gardener. There's a lot of stuff going on because Infinity Countdown is basically a giant Guardians of the Galaxy book. It's, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy wrapped in Infinity Countdown and we need more interaction from the Infinity Stones. I want this to be a real story, not just some sort of Guardians of the Galaxy kind of like book with a facade of Infinity Countdown. So Jerry Dugan, I'm sure that you got a plan for this one and I can't wait to see what you've got. However, I really want a little bit more intensity and a little bit more involvement from the rest of the Infinity Stones sometime soon. Making our way back over to DC, let's talk about Mr. Miracle number eight. So Mr. Miracle is one of the best comic books in production right now. Uh, that's pretty standard. That's pretty, uh, you know, accepted amongst the comic book compadres that I have out there in the world. And Mr. Miracle is a story about lots of different things, but we see a little bit more battle in this one. He's on Apocalypse. He's trying to take down Darkseid. He has basically become the High Father. There's all kinds of different stuff, and they just had a baby. So there's a lot of different things that are rolling around here. It's like Mr. Miracle versus the Lump and all kinds of stuff, but the variant cover over there by Mitch Gerrids is just awesome. I love everything about it. About it. He's just stabbing that like little Batman plushy doll kind of thing. It just looks ridiculous and amazing. And I'm excited to see where Mr. Miracle goes. It's one of those few books where I have no real idea where it's headed, which has got me so excited that I can't even explain it. A book that I do have a good idea where it's going is Amazing Spider-Man 799. And while we did see the Red Goblin, if you want to check out the origin of the Red Goblin, it's up there. So the origin of the Red Goblin in the last issue and the issues before that, we actually get a situation where Peter Parker is trying to take on Norman Osborn's Red Goblin with the help of his friends kind of on his own. He's set up this kind of squad, it seems, to be patrolling a lot of his friends and his family to make sure that they're protected from Norman Osborn. And we're going to see if that's inside the parameters of what the Red Goblin Goblin set when he gave him this deal. Obviously it's not, otherwise the story would be boring. So I'm excited to see what kind of chaos and crime that Norman Osborn can kind of concoct for this situation, and who's going to end up on the real bad end of the stick for this one. But that brings us to the big book, the big book of the week, Action Comics number 1000. 1,000 issues of Action Comics, 80 years of Superman, and variants, thousands of variants, or whatever they are. They're doing tons of different stuff when it comes to Action Comics. I can't tell you what's inside. There's far too many stories. There's too many creators, too many great artists. There's just so much going on that Action Comics 1,000, if you're not, if you have to have me tell you, go buy Action Comics 1000, I question your commitment to comic books. It's just one of those no-brainer situations where you're going to go plunk down that $8, you're going to get history inside your hands, and you're going to enjoy every single moment of it, and it's going to be the, the precursor to Brian Michael Bendis. So this might be your last chance at classic Superman before we get this much more modern take or, or whatever his interpretation is. So if you want to revel a little bit in the history, this is your last chance. Also, we get a few new number ones. We've got Skyward number one, which is written by the showrunner for Lucifer on TV, and it looks to be a really interesting story about a girl that was born after G-Day, and G-Day is the time where gravity on Earth became less than it currently is. So you have the ability to basically fly if you jump really, really high, but if you jump just a bit too high, then you end up falling into space, and it's super dangerous. So her adaptation and how she kind of runs into a plot about returning the gravity to Earth is going to be relatively interesting. So I was always intrigued by that one. So Skyward number one is a book that I would take a look at. And of course, we've got the return of Black Hammer. So Black Hammer, Age of Doom number one, as we finished up Black Hammer last time, we actually saw the daughter of Black Hammer become the new Black Hammer and was about to explain exactly what happened. Of course, I think this one starts with her getting zapped away to another parallel universe, so Black Hammer Age of Doom is going to continue to expand that mythos of the Black Hammer universe, and Jeff Lemire and Dean Ormston have been taking ownership of this and have just been crazy good when it comes to telling their stories inside the Black Hammer universe for Dark Horse. So I'm excited for this one, but I want to know what you guys are excited for. Are you really excited about the wedding? Do you 
you really want to pick up Action Comics number 1000? Does something like Renew Your Vows really have your attention? I mean, there is so much stuff going on, so hit me up in the comments down below and we can start that conversation. As always, if you like what you see, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to get more news, reviews, and commentary on comic books, comic book movies, comic book TV shows and games, and anything and everything inside the world of comics.